Hello, uncool cucumbers. Roscoe here. It is time for our second Wednesday waffle. I believe it is May 19th. Yes, that's what the 519 at the bottom of my computer screen mean. May 19th, 2021. Wednesday waffle number two. I don't have a ton to waffle about. Plus, um, I know most people's tolerance for this sort of thing is minimal at best. But I wanted to talk about something that I kind of have stumbled into as of late, which is David Lynch versus J.J. Abrams. Now, this was brought upon by my, well, wanting to get into Twin Peaks a little bit. Um, I remember seeing it as a kid here and there, but it kind of scared me, and I think my parents didn't let me watch it, so... Anyways, I saw a few minutes of it, and that was about it. Now I'm trying to get back into it. And I'm vaguely, moderately familiar with some of the works of David Lynch. But anyways, I got to watching this YouTube channel called Twin Perfect, which is fan uh, pretty good, by the way. Um, <laughs> whether it's accurate or not, I don't know, but it uh, has some heck of a theorizing going on in it and it seems to make some sense but anyways it got me to thinking about how there was a lot of clips of David Lynch interviews it got me to thinking about how certain artists and this is different for different types of art and different contexts of art but for what he was going for David Lynch strikes me as a good faith artist he demands that his audience stick with him either for a couple seasons of a TV show or for the length of a movie and in that time he will test the audience the audience has to pay attention the audience has to think but if they do that there will be some reward for that it is towards a specific purpose purpose a specific end and not all art demands that. Some art, you know, a lot of music, you just have to give it a couple minutes and that's it. And if it satisfies, it does. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. And, and so be it. In fact, most of it you can tell within the, wor within the worst. <laughs> yeah, it usually is the worst. But the first five seconds, if it's going to be worth your time or not. Um, and that's where the versus J.J. Abrams comes in. Because, of course, there was the infamous debacle with... Lost, which I believe was seven seasons of basically pure nonsense with no resolution whatsoever. Um, the faux resolution that was given to it was actually called out by a lot of commentators after the first episode, and that it was denied that that was was what it was about. And sure enough, that that was what it was. And I'm not going to get into the details of that, but just don't waste your time with it. I got sucked into it like a fool. Because based on the entire premise that was given of, wow, this is just taking so many amazing twists and turns. How are they going to tie all these disparate pieces together? It, it would just be amazing how you can make all of this come together in the end. And they didn't. They, it was just a, I'm trying to call it a whitewash. Uh, <laughs> they papered over it and made it just... Yeah, it was very disappointing, to say the least. The total opposite of, say, John Irving's book, A Prayer for Owen Meany, which goes on and on and on, and it seems like, what does any of this have to do with anything? It's just all these details that seem irrelevant, they all come together in the end. Lost, complete opposite. All these details that seem irrelevant, yeah. <laughs> it, there, there is no relevance to it. There's no. It exists in a universe that doesn't require any any uh, cohesion. That that's the answer. It's it's absurd. It's it's just absurd, and not the fun kind of absurd like Lewis Carroll or anything like that. So um. So yeah, I just wanted to uh, rant about that for just a second. That yeah, David Lynch. It seems like he has an idea he's attempting to get across. Um, something specific that can be interpreted properly and he gives all the necessary clues, information, guideposts 
to lead to that if a person wants to find it. And when you're demanding that much of your audience and you have a difficult work of art that doesn't lay itself out on a silver platter, that's very important. There are a lot of these sort of pseudo difficult things these days where there's, you know, all these vague allusions to things um, that never quite materialize. I'm bringing up Stranger Things. I haven't watched all of Stranger Things. I have a feeling that it's maybe a midpoint in that. That it, it is about certain spe specific things. You know, it's about the Montauk stuff, which is intriguing in and of itself. You can look into that. Um, M. Night Shyamalan comes to mind as well. <laughs> he has a lot of movies where you have to buy into a certain thing and then it the payoff is very weak. Sometimes the payoff is pretty good though, so you, you just never know. I think he I don't think he's a bad faith actor or artist. I think he's just um his quality <laughs> quality of output can be different. And that come, is the same for most artists. I you know, I don't this bad faith thing I think definitely does apply to certain people like JJ J. Abrams, maybe the guys who are doing Game of Thrones where they really don't know what they're doing and somehow they are gifted into being able to to do a major project which is guaranteed to lure a lot of people into it for a long period of time um, with no with no end in sight there's no end game <laughs> They hope they can pull it together in the end. And I'm not saying that can't happen. You, As an artist, you can paint yourself into a corner. Not knowing how something's going to end and pull it off. I think the problem with a lot of this stuff is, though, is that it has so much marketing and such a big budget behind it that they're able to draw in a very large audience and get them to commit to a large amount of time. And there is no guarantee that it will pay off in the end. I think those sorts of things are much better if the artist does that on their own risk, and then if it pays off in the end, that's when the artist or when the audience finds it. There's a lot of gambling as of late with the audience's time and attention. Basically, uh, roping them in under false pretenses that. <laughs> that um, the creators know what they're doing and that they've got an actual message they're trying to get across when actually they're just filling in time with um, artifice, which which is okay. Art for art's sake. Um, you know, just doing things for their, their own entertainment value. That's one thing. There, there is something to be said for that. You know, even with these... TV shows that ultimately amount to nothing, yeah, the viewership does get a lot of hours of entertainment out of it. There's a show being put on. Um, that said, I think they could get that a lot of other ways, and it's too bad that there isn't a proper narrative that they're, they're able to follow and get some conclusion to that uh, resolves itself. Once again, going back to the music thing, these melodies. Um, that said, most melodies in popular music, whether it's metal, pop, <laughs> so to speak, R&B, whatever it is, country for sure, um, they rarely introduce an intriguing idea, and if they do, it's never resolved. <laughs> it's... It's all just playing with sounds and what did Shakespeare say? I'm crim criminally uneducated on Shakespeare. Yeah, sound and fury signifying nothing, something of that nature. Anyways, look, look it up. That's a message to myself, by the way. Um, 
but yeah, it's just refreshing to have somebody like David Lynch who actually seems to think through his projects all the way. And even when he, due to studio pressures and things outside of his control, is forced to kind of um, react to things in the spur of the moment or make up for mistakes that other people have made and try to resolve them, he's actually capable of doing that because he has coherent ideas. Um, so that's uh, extremely refreshing. Uh, certainly something to be applauded. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, I think that's enough ranting about that for now, but, um, yeah. Catch you next Wednesday.